This video is going to be about the inheritance of X-linked genes as well as X inactivation. So we know from the last video that our X chromosomes have a lot of important genes on them. So when those genes are passed on from one generation to the next, whether or not you're male or female can make a difference in how those genes get expressed. So we know that women are always going to have two X chromosomes. And so because they have two X chromosomes, that means they have two copies of every gene on that chromosome. And so this, um, any locus on these chromosomes is gonna behave like normal. So if we have someone that's heterozygous for let's say uh, red-green color blindness, which is a very common X-linked recessive allele, so she would have normal vision because she has a dominant allele for normal vision, um, which can cancel out and uh, keep the recessive allele from actually being expressed in the phenotype. So with males, it's um, a little different. So let's say we have this woman that marries a, um, a normal seeing male. And so when these individuals make gametes, the woman, all of her eggs are gonna get an X chromosome, but it could be either one of these X chromosomes. And with the man, half of his gametes will get the X chromosome and the other half will get the Y chromosome. So let's say their first child is a boy and he gets the recessive allele from his mother and the Y from his father. So this, um, this boy is going to be colorblind. And so the reason that he would be colorblind is because uh, men are hemizygous for all of the genes on our X chromosome. And so hemizygous means we just have one copy of that uh, gene. And so because we only have this one X chromosome, regardless of what allele we get, whether it's dominant or recessive, it's going to be expressed because there's nothing else there to um, work against it. So now that we kind of know how um, genes on our X chromosome are inherited, we can look at another really interesting thing that X chromosomes do, specifically in women, called X inactivation. So we know um, that women have two X chromosomes in all of their cells. So after fertilization has occurred, if it is going to be a girl, early on in embryonic development, we have um, all the cells having two X chromosomes. And so it would be easy to think that the females then are going to have twice the amount of uh, gene product for genes on the X chromosome as males because they have one, uh, males have one copy and females have two copies. So that's actually not what happens. So early on in embryonic development, we're gonna have something called X inactivation take place. And so what's gonna happen during X inactivation is that one of the X chromosomes in each of these cells is, is gonna become inactive and uh, it's gonna get transformed into something called a bar body. So which chromosome becomes inactivated is a completely random process and it's independent from what chromosome's inactivated in all of the other cells. So for example, in this first cell, we could have this chromosome get inactivated. In the second one, it could be this one. And in the third one, it could also be this one. And so these all happen randomly and what happens in this cell doesn't affect what happens in this cell or in this cell. So after we have these, um, this specific pattern of X inactivation set up, all of the daughter cells produced by mitosis of these um, cells are going to have uh, the same X chromosome inactivated. So both of these, for example, would have this X chromosome inactivated because that's what happened in this first one. And so this pattern can lead to um, a unique uh, kind of feature that we can see sometimes called um, mosaics. So if an individual is mosaic for a certain trait, it would be uh, because this X inactivation uh, inactivates random X chromosomes. So some cells will get X chromosomes with a particular allele for a certain gene and the other cells might get the other chromosome with a different allele for that gene. So we can see this um, in tortoiseshell cats. So in female tortoiseshell cats, um, they'll have spots of different colors on their fur and that's because of X inactivation. So some spots get one chromosome inactivated that has a particular color and then uh, other spots are gonna have a different X chromosome inactivated. So mosaicism um, is directly related to X inactivation. 
So how these X chromosomes actually get inactivated, so there's a region on the X chromosomes called the XIST region, which stands for the X inactive specific transcript. And so um, those regions on these two X chromosomes are going to interact with each other early on um, in embryonic development. And this region will only become active in the chromosome that's going to become inactivated. So just to say that again, the XIST region of uh, the X chromosome will only get activated in the chromosome that is going to be inactivated and turned into the bar body. And so once this is activated, it's going to um, allow for the modification of the DNA and the proteins that DNA uh, is associated with, which are called histones. Um, and so it's going to allow modifications in those, such as uh, DNA methylation, which is going to eventually result in that X chromosome being inactivated and transformed into a bar body. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu slash tutoring. Thank you.